Hello guys and welcome back to Let Me Teach Ya. I am sorry I haven't made any videos in a while. I didn't mean to disappear. Stupid pear. <laughs> Why would you say that? I started again working as a guide, so now I don't have as much time as I had before. But we're not done with our videos, as we have to talk about some verbs we didn't have time to mention in video number 7, and about some other morphological details. So, are you ready? Let's start! Imagine you are a Greek who migrated to Germany as a kid. Your name is Jorgos Spanakopoulos. As you've lived most of your life in Deutschland, you know that if you want to say I know in German, you will say Ich weiß. The word weiß is the first singular person of the verb wissen, to know. This verb is not regular. In fact, the root should not be different switching from the present infinitive to the first singular person of the present indicative. In German, most verbs, even strong verbs, which are usually considered irregular, follow this simple pattern. Binden, present infinitive. Ich binde, present indicative. Lesen, ich lese. Essen, ich esse. Trinken, ich trinke and so on. But this is not the case with the verb wissen. In fact, people say ich weiß. We almost have the impression that we're talking about the preterite form because, as you already know, the preterite form of strong verbs are characterized by a root vowel which is different from the one we have in the infinitive form and consequently in the present indicative. See, for example, binden ich band. Lesen, ich las. Essen, ich aß. Trinken, ich trank. Moreover, also the dissonances of wissen in the indicative present are similar to the ones of the other strong verbs in the indicative preterite. For example, there's no T in the third singular person, which is an element that we usually find in the indicative present. Now, let's not forget you are Yorgos Spanakopoulos and you know that if you want to say in Greek that you saw something in the past, you say Ida. Ida and Weiss come from the same root, Indo-European wait, which meant to see. Which makes sense. In fact, the root preserved the same meaning to see in languages like Greek or Latin, video. The same thing happened in Germanic but people started using the verb huitanon, especially in the preterite tense, expressing the idea of a totally completed action. And, of course, something you have seen is something you know. So they started using a past form to express the present result of a process that has started in the past. The process of knowledge. I saw something before, so now I know it. This mechanism led to the use of ancient preterite forms as if they were irregular present forms. And here is a new category of verbs, the preterite present verbs. To this group belong most modal verbs like may, can, shall. In fact, these verbs don't add an s desinence in the third singular person and in some languages they change roots switching from the singular to the plural persons, like strong verbs originally did in the preterite tense. See German können. Ich kann, wir können. In most other languages, analogy flattened the conjugation and now you find the same root for all persons, like in Swedish Jag kan, vi kan. In a later stage, preterite present verbs created a new preterite form with a dental suffix, along the lines of weak verbs. Uh, another group of verbs is the one we call athematic verbs. Well, it's maybe five of them. It's not a huge group. But it's important and needs to be mentioned because it includes very old verbs which are of prime importance. Athematic means without theme. 
the dissonances were originally added directly to the root, without a suffix, without a sound that usually appears and that we need to understand what group that word belongs to. The most important of these verbs is to be, an archaic and complex verb, so complex that we usually prefer not to reconstruct its past and just categorizing it as an irregular verb. Well, even if we want to try to reconstruct the history of the different forms of this verb, the matter is so complex and unclear that still today scholars don't always agree on this topic. Anyway, when you find the verb to be in most Germanic and also Indo-European languages, you may notice several different roots are used to build the different forms. Germanic beuna, from which we find be and been in English or ich bin in German. Germanic is, from which we have most of the forms starting with vowels, like are, is, or German ist, Swedish er, Norwegian er. But also those starting with s, like wir sind in German. And then we have also Germanic wesanon, mostly for the past forms like was, were in English. Why do people mess things up like that? We should have learned from Russian, which abolished completely this verb, at least in the present tense. To the same category belong the Germanic verbs willianon, that is will in English, donon, to do, ranganon, to go, and finally standanon, to stand. But stop talking about verbs! Let's conclude by saying a few words about a topic I just mentioned in video number 6, articles, saying that they didn't exist neither in Indo-European nor in Germanic. In fact, at some point, most languages decided to create one, in order to distinguish definite things from indefinite things. And I'm not just talking about Germanic languages. Lots of Indo-European languages did the same and most of them started using demonstrative pronouns to mark something or someone as already defined. That man instead of just man. This use of the demonstrative pronouns became so widespread and common that you could find the demonstrative pronoun every three seconds. So demonstrative pronouns used as defining particles lost of importance, like in an inflationary process because they were repeated too often, and became unstressed, thus evolving differently from the pure demonstrative pronouns that we still have today. That is why we have some similarities between that and the in English and in other Germanic languages, but also in Romance languages. In fact, Latin ille, illa, illud gave il, lo, la in Italian, or le, la in French, or in Greek, where this is afto, and the neuter article just to. Okay guys, I don't know what I'm doing next time. I think the general part of this course is over. I don't know if I'm making new videos about the single Germanic languages or maybe analyzing the single branches of the Germanic languages. There's only one way to find out. Subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon as well. I'm not earning money from this, so I'm sorry if you see ads before the video or during the videos. It's not my fault YouTube decided to include ads even in non-monetized videos. And I'm not even responsible about the contents of these ads. I don't decide anything about that. So if they invite you, I don't know, to invest your money, for example, in digital currencies or in gold teeth or whatever it is, just don't do it. I don't recommend that. Okay, guys, thanks again. See you next time and behave yourselves.